Hello friends, welcome back to Susan and John Math Tube. So, Susan and John brings you exam preparation series for the second year, second part, engineering students who are studying applied math. So, this is lesson number 7 and now we will discuss the bilinear transformation or linear fractional transformation. Okay, so before that, as always, the four points. So here we go. One, two, three, and four. It will be very nice if you practice this. And let's start with the bilinear transformation. Okay, so a special function which is in the form of this itself tells you bilinear. So basically, this looks like the linear function and again another one. So you are able to see two linear functions. So the bilinear or linear fractional transformation. So we will be discussing only one type of question here. That is the questions related to cross ratio. And this is the point. So, if you have a bilinear transformation and this is the condition, this determinant AD minus BC should be not equal to 0, then only you will call it a bilinear transformation. Okay, so this is the bilinear transformation. And um, let's say you know three points in the domain plane. I told in the beginning in the first video, complex functions will be mapped from one plane to another plane so if this is your xy window and this is your uv window the domain will be here and the output will be over here so imagine you know three points or three input values and also you know three output values that is w1 w2 w3 that means when you input z1 the output is w1 when you input Z2, the output is W2, etc. And then this ratio, this is called the cross ratio, this ratio will be maintained. Okay, so there are a few problems based on this cross ratio. So we will check them out from your past papers. Okay, so that's the point. Bilinear transformations preserves cross ratio. And this is question number one define a linear fractional mapping you have to read a lot about it there are so many properties etc etc you have to read because uh, the question might change this year they might not ask question related to cross ratio they can ask anything so um, make sure you read about linear fractional mapping or the bilinear mapping okay find the bilinear mapping so we have to find the function and they have given three points in the domain and they have given three points in the range that is the output that means the output of 0 is i the output of 1 is 2 and the output of minus 1 is 4 it's really easy so what you do is you just write the bilinear transformation preserves cross ratio and you remember the formula so it's very easy to remember it's just one two three w w1 w2 w3 that's all and here also you have w1 w2 w3 and w the same thing goes for z and always remember these are the inputs and these are the outputs okay so let's substitute so we have z1 z2 z3 and w1 w2 w3 just input all those values and look at this 1 2 4 so I have kept 1 2 4 and you will see the same thing over here and here same thing and that is for z1 z2 z3 now we have to simplify and remember they are asking find the function find the bilinear mapping so our aim is to find w in terms of AZ plus B the whole divided by CZ plus D so we have to find W in terms of Z and it should be in this format 
okay so that is our aim so let's simplify and i'll recommend to use calculator to simplify complex fractions etc okay so let's just cancel this now one very important thing look at this if you want you can use component at dividend that is if you have two fractions a by b is equal to c by d then you can write a plus b by a minus b equal to c plus d by c minus d or the reciprocal and there are other forms also uh, like okay we have a by b is equal to c by d so just imagine i'm adding one on both sides so we will get a plus b by b equal to c plus d by d you can do the same thing with minus you can do like minus one minus one okay so you have three options either you add one on both sides or you can do with minus one on both sides or apply the component rate dividend as such and here i can see look at the denominator and the numerator the numerator is w minus i and the denominator is 4 minus w so if you add them up this w and w will get cancelled isn't it and if you subtract you'll get 2w so uh, but there's a problem when you subtract you have to remember this denominator will be here i'll try to explain once more this becomes a minus b by b and when you subtract what happens is um, w plus w will be 2w so you'll get w in the numerator as well as we have the same quantity here w in the denominator so what i'm trying to do here is i'm going to add one on both sides with the intention w with, will get cancelled in the numerator so take a look at this so i'm adding one on both sides and that gives me i'll take the lcm so look at this okay that's it now i got rid of w from the numerator so that it will be very easy for me to uh, find the value of w so let's just flip it okay and cross multiplying and a little bit simplification just what you call this into this and one into this okay now it looks almost like our what you call linear fractional and now we want the value of w i told you our aim is to find w and write it in terms of a z plus b the whole divided by c z plus d so that's it you can take lcm simplify simplify if you want to use a calculator so that's it so we have our linear fractional so this was the question and if you have a doubt you can just input the values they gave you and check whether you are getting the output you can use a calculator and try it so you can input the values they have given and check whether you are getting the exact output so that you can confirm your function now let's try one more question find the bilinear transformation i hope all of you are doing these problems along with me i hope you're ready with pen paper everything so the input values are 2 i and minus 2 and the output the output of 2 is 1 the output of i is i and the output of minus 2 is minus 1 so i'll put the question on the right side of the screen okay so how do we start look at this a bilinear transformation means complex valued function which is in the form a z plus b the whole divided by c z plus d and bilinear transformation preserves cross ratio that means if you know three points in the input and output then you can find the bilinear transformation 
So since a bilinear transformation preserves cross ratio, okay, this is the cross ratio, and I'm going to put the points. I told you a trick. All I have to do is one i minus one, and the set values. And never forget, our aim is to find W in terms of Z. So this, you can take this and this to the right side. And now use a calculator, you can simplify. Put your calculator into tick mode or option, whatever is written in your calculator and you can put it into complex form it might be written cm plx or something like that and then in most of the calculator there will be a button called eng and that i will be somewhere near that anyway you can simplify these things with calculator i did it with the calculator so i got the answer 4 minus 3i by 5 and then now 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 look at this so you have many options if you want you can put plus one plus one or if you want you can put minus one minus one it's your it's it's up to you anyway I'm going to apply component at dividend do that is a plus B by a minus B equal to the same thing so the w in the denominator will get cancelled so i'll be able to find w very fast hope you're doing the problem along with me so w equal if you want you can stop with this but i can see something common over here that one plus three i so you can divide throughout by mm, three minus i it's not compulsory but okay now if you want you can experiment with this you can input 2 you can input 2 over here instead of our said and take a calculator and simplify it you'll get 1 you can try putting the value i and if our answer is correct if my answer is correct I didn't check you will get the output as i and if you input minus 2, of course the output should be minus 1. And if you can confirm that with a calculator, that means your answer is 100% perfect. Okay, let's move ahead. Find the bilinear transformation. Okay, so this is very important. So we have the input infinity. So we have to manipulate the formula slightly and the output values are minus 3 minus 1 1 so look at this input is 0 the output is minus 3 and the input is 1 output is minus 1 and finally infinity and 1 and a new word that's very important find the invariant points do you know what's invariant invariant means the points who disobey the function Wow, what's that? So, points which do not, uh, what do you call, change even when you apply a function. For example, I'll show you a real valued function, x square. So, if I input 1, I'm going to get 1 itself. Even if I input minus 1, I'm going to get the same thing. No, I won't get the same thing. So, the point 1 will be called invariant. Okay, likewise, we want the points which will not change even after applying a rule. Okay, let's discuss those things at the last. I'll keep the question here. Okay, so how do you start? Tell me. Since a bilinear transformation preserves cross ratio we have. Yeah, W minus W1. Okay, 1, 2, 3. You can substitute okay now I want you to check this look at this the third point that is our set 3 tends to infinity and I'm sure you learned that if a quantity tends to infinity the reciprocal will tend to 0 so that is exactly what we are trying to do 
so this one this one I'm going to take this outside so if you have a minus B and if you take B outside you're going to end up with a by B minus 1 now look at the denominator it's over here take it outside so this and this will cancel and this will become 0 and this will become 0 and the total value will be minus 1 okay now let's substitute I hope you're okay with this mm, now this time if you want you can apply that plus 1 minus 1 trick etc etc but no need you just cross multiply it's simple enough wow we got it very fast so if you want you can input and check the output you can input 0 and check whether you're getting minus 3 you can input 1 so 1 minus 3 is minus 2 and yeah I hope the transformation is okay okay now let's go to the main part invariant points so look at this I'll repeat once more the points which do not change even after applying a rule or a function are called invariant so look at the rule here normally when you input something for Z you'll get an output something else okay for example let's try to input 0 so when you input 0 you're going to get 0 minus 3 and 0 plus 1 and the answer is minus 3 so look at this the input and the output are different look at the second one the input and the output are different they are asking you the points which are invariant that means the input is said the output should also be equal to said so this is how we find the invariant points I hope that is clear so a point is invariant if it is not affected by the transformation that means you input said but after simplification the output will be said again simplify 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 okay these are the invariant points that's it let's check out one more problem so find the invariant points of the transformation 2z minus 4i by iz plus 5 so tell me how do you find the invariant points it's very simple input and output should be the same so look at this our input is set so the output should be set and that's it now cross multiply make it look like a quadratic equation I hope you still remember the formula to solve a quadratic equation a x square plus b x plus c equal to 0 if you wish you can factorize but I'm not going to advise you to factorize this it's better you solve using the formula minus b plus or minus root under b square minus 4ac the whole divided by 2a and always keep in mind root under negative something let's say 4 that will be equal to 2i so if you want to find root of negative numbers it's very easy you just take the square root and put 1i okay so we have our a b c and let's apply the formula so we have i into i that is i square yeah, plus 5 okay that's it so the invariant points are 4i and minus 4 minus i if you want you can substitute and experiment with it later okay anyway that's it for the time being so if you find the video useful like share and subscribe and I'll be back with the next video and in that we'll be discussing about Cauchy's theorem, Cauchy's integral formula and Cauchy's integral formula for higher derivatives including the proof because they might ask the proof. So till then, bye.